Alfonso Bembo with Wicked Google, partner, founder, architect at uh, Architect Comics in New York. Uh, Wick and I have known each other for a while now, and I'm glad to see her in another format, which is in the context of the Renaissance Picture Bible. And with this fantastic project in China uh, for the Asian Games that is finishing this year, 2023, by your New York practice architect class. So, with a, can you just tell us a little bit about this project? We're seeing the completed project here for the first time at Palazzo Bengal. But can you take us back to when did it start and what is Arctic Times responsibility here in terms of the architecture? Yeah, yeah, sure. So uh, this is the result of an invited competition in 2018, um, where were uh, five international offices invited. Uh, we all went to Shanghai or to uh, Hangzhou to uh, present, and lo and behold, we won this competition. We had two partners, uh, Melk Landscape Design and uh, Dorn Tomasetti Engineers. Uh, we kind of broke a few rules in the process, and we always think that that's why we won. One was that instead of an architect with engineers and other designers below them like a pyramid model, we made equal partners right, okay. with the landscape designers and the engineers. And then the other rule we broke is that if you see this whole park here, right. um, so the park is essentially 116 acres, 47 hectares, was supposed to be 85% park, but they also needed seven buildings. So seven buildings, you know, it gets- Athletic facilities the in the park. Seven they buildings. Get, yeah. No, there's two parking garages, fitness center, the exhibition center, two stadiums, and a shopping mall. In addition to the athletic facilities, these are buildings. We, we did all of those. Yes, okay. Yeah, we did all of those. So actually here you see the beginning of the right. fitness center, but then for example, this fitness center, um, you see over there is essentially a green roof. Right. So the reason why you don't see more buildings in that park here, but you see hills, is that we actually took the ground, we excavated from the restored wetland lands and this valley that is the connective device mm -hmm. between the two parts of the park that soil we put on the parking garages so we have 20 meter high hills that essentially are covering now this this was also one of the reasons i think we won because um, the park was supposed to have the two stadiums right in the middle mm -hmm. at the road and we said well that doesn't really activate the park and we very much wanted the park to be for the neighborhood so that means we put the stadiums in the centers of the two halves, mm -hmm. connected it by this valley. Right. That is a new Which concept. Which we see here in the model. Yeah, is in, no, this is the landscape, but this right. is the valley and right. that's the valley. So this is kind of a shop, new con shopping concept. Right, okay. So essentially it's a shopping valley, <laughs> right. if you want to call it that. So it's got retail, a it's retail, got even a Starbucks. Hospitality. Yeah. yeah. And essentially that is what is, there's, so it goes under a river there with an Mm -hmm. and under the road. Um, so I think we won because that and because this this circular building, because we moved it, mm -hmm. it ended up in one of the client's districts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was really great. And then we proposed, since we the city was, or the government was so conscious about mm -hmm. making an eco park, right. so we restored wetlands, porous pavement, all those things, that we then proposed to make the buildings hybrids. Right. So you don't get the the stadium that isn't used anymore, but which is often a problem with these huge, problem. yeah, it's always a dead white elephant yeah. in the city that is no longer used, modern ruins. Right. So we propose to make them hybrid. So this one is a stadium and a concert hall, and the field hockey stadium over there and over there. Right. Um, its field is set in a large oval disc that is reset in the landscape five meters deep, actually. Right on the far end and uh, level on the close end so that in the future can be an open air theater, a concert, uh, or outdoor cinema. So the idea really that that's a landscape sculpture and this guy is an event hall. Now because uh, it was supposed to open last September, so mm -hmm. it actually finished since mm -hmm. last September, 
um, no one could get in, no, no photographers, everything was closed with COVID. The channel was closed because of COVID. Yeah. yeah. And also for them internally. So our wow. photographer literally couldn't get there. Mm -hmm. So hence why we just photographed it. But the beauty of it is because the games now open this September is that the park is actually way more finished. Then you would thought it would be at the games. Then it would how did that been. how did that affect uh, the, you in terms of you know the the sporting aspect? Obviously, is the showcase element, yeah. but you've been able to work on the park a little bit more. It seems. Mm -hmm. What has come about? You talked about this green roof down here, for example. It looks, yeah. it looks quite advanced. The landscaping. Yeah. Well, this was the thing, of course. What we asked the client when we. Uh, won the competition is how are you going to do 47 hectares of mm. park in such a short time because they build this whole thing in three and a half years mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so that's seven buildings this stadium alone is 350,000 square feet or mm -hmm. 35,000 square meters so this thing is about 20,000 square meters of shopping mall it's a huge huge site 1.6 kilometers long and they essentially started laughing when we asked them that and said uh -huh. they had several greenhouses full of grown-up trees plants everything ready and this, I, it literally overnight became a park. So the COVID, China access, the Asian games, all these things uh, created a certain confusion about when this thing was actually, this project is actually done. But looking at it now, it's quite a large project. Yeah. There's, there's tremendous scale. It seems almost uh, quite finished, uh, very connected to its urban uh, context. Can you describe for your office uh, what this project means in terms of architectonics? Uh, you know, this is a major project, large scale. It's your New York-based practice. Now you're working in China. What do you hope to have done here? Hope to, hope that this will allow you to do in the future. Yeah. Well, strange objects. Yeah. So the theme uh, of strange objects is actually in our mm -hmm. new book, mm -hmm. right? Strange objects, new solids. Published by Akhtar last year. Uh, last year yeah. and uh, the idea of the book is very much what we also did here is how we uh, through working with manufacturers and mm. prototyping can innovate architecture so these buildings as you can see they're all doubly curved yeah. strange object is of course very much here right where you can start to see the bulging right, right. the intersection of the stadium is really the study of how to make a building hybrid right. um, and through these intersecting volumes we started to create a much more fluid right. and much more uh, easygoing uh, building that is very easily adaptable to different programs. Um, and, and works well with the natural... Yeah, uh, it's very uh, organic also. Yeah, and basically that's also what the client really loved, I have to say. So for us, this is not only uh, a massive master plan mm. we did with seven buildings, but also very much how to innovate architecture, how to work with doubly curved surfaces. Mm. And we, we love to think that beautiful architecture is not expensive. Right, so right. for example, this glass diagrid that right. is an actual diagrid works together with a suspend dome roof Right. Which takes care of no columns. Right. The whole building's column free, hence the adaptability also. And all these doubly curved surfaces are worked out in um, BIM. So, for example, mm -hmm. the brass shingles, only 85 different shapes and and 5,000 pieces. But then the glass up there, you can see we kept the glass planar mm -hmm. uh, and desi designed little tiny mm -hmm. eyelids mm -hmm. that you can see up there. But then if you zoom out and you see the facade, you it, see it's it, actually it, invisible. It, it, it's but such it's, a gigantic uh, scale. The, the way that it both reflects, but also yeah. creates shadow, yeah. the, the slight... Uh, 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 yeah, I see it also up there. No? I mean, I think that's yeah. what also gives it a quite natural biophilic feel. Yeah. Uh, for you personally, you've been uh, uh, head of the department at Penn for a number mm -hmm. of years, but that's ending. You finished this very large project. So just speaking personally, and this kind of, I think, change in your life or your career where mm -hmm. you don't have this, won't have as much academic responsibility. What do you hope to do personally, both in terms of your architecture, but also in terms of your research based on some of the things we see here? 
I never made that correlation before. Yes, that's because things are happening. <laughs> yes. One thing is ending, one thing is starting. It seems yeah. like a double on slide. Yeah. So what I did for myself to make mm. the transition mm. is uh, I wrote a paper um, for the UIA that mm. is basically the World Architects Forum in Copenhagen in mm. July. Uh, that was accepted. So I'll be in a panel on synthetic natures. Right. Okay. Uh, very much thinking on the office. Uh, in the future, how we are going to think of buildings that essentially, uh, rather than being 50% of the carbon mm. footprint currently construction and households are, um, how buildings could become uh, productive and create oxygen and absorb carbon. So this kind of transition to an architecture that is mm -hmm. um, uh, an agent in environmental change. So that's really what, what I'd like to work on. And the funny thing is I'm already going to the UIA in Copenhagen, right. the COP in Dubai just invited right. us, and then there is a few other conferences in between. So it's, it's interesting that once you start talking about something and, mm. and investigating and researching it, it also kind of moves you along. And I think that book really helped yes. because we're so clear about how we think. And how you made it, how you built it. Innovate and also it's in a non-Western context. Also. So which is I think important. Yeah. You know, we talk all, all yeah. often about the decarbonization, but yeah. uh, there's also another the south and the east. So yeah, yeah. Winka them founder, architect of Architectonics New York at their Strange Objects exhibition here at the Palazzo Bembo, talking about their project for the Asian Games in 2023, a park, various stadium, uh, and September, will you be there for the opening? Yes. Oh, okay. September so we'll, 23. Everybody watch. We'll see what we do at the, at the Asian Games. <laughs> Thanks, Winka. Thank okay. you, Gorham. So I'm with Justin Korhammer. He is a partner and an architect at Architectonics in New York. And we're talking about this exhibition, Strange Objects, at the Palazzo Bembo here in Venice. Uh, it's part of the Architecture Biennale, which is a parallel exhibition. So, Justin, can you talk a little bit about your role in this project? This is a very large project, very major project. Mm -hmm. uh, these kind of projects are not done by one person, two person. Can you describe what it took to get a project like this designed and built uh, uh, from the perspective, the architect's perspective? Yeah, I mean, as Winka already described, it's, it was very much a team effort, right? I mean, within the office, there was obviously a learning curve also on our end um, in terms of the scale of the project mm -hmm. and also the typology. Um, you know, we definitely wanted to innovate in, uh, also in terms of the architecture and the integration with the landscape. And so in working with Thornton Tomasetti, um, and Melk architects, right. uh, the landscape designers from the very beginning, we very much created this as an integrated group, um, and especially with the landscape aspect, that was very helpful. Mm -hmm. I wasn't working with uh, Chinese clients. I mean, this is, you were very, you know, this is Eastern China, you're all the way in New York. How does that work, both in terms of communication, project management, how you describe certain design details and how they interpret it, both in terms of the final, the final thing we see here, but also during the, to the process of getting this thing done. Well, the nature of such a project and projects in China in general is that uh, there is a somewhat of a handover at some mm -hmm. point, right? I mean, we developed the project very far into, uh, I would say, basically construction documents, which was not called construction mm -hmm. documents in their terminology. Mm -hmm. um, but we tried to push the project as much as we could into small details so that we could hand it over and there wouldn't be so much of an issue of translating it. But altogether, I feel that the client and also the architect that we work with, the local design mm -hmm. institute that we work with over there, were extremely respectful mm -hmm. and they had also great input. You know, I mean, they took over the model even in construction. Mm -hmm. There was a total, how was it called? Total construction company. It's not a general mm -hmm. constructor, mm -hmm. a, a contractor, but it's a total contractor. They had basically a whole team that would bring this into BIM and then execute every aspect of it, in, um, from landscape to project management, the logistics, mm -hmm. and everything in BIM. And we actually won a BIM award for it, a, a big. Uh, 
Yeah. A project like this in BIM is sort of, there's no other option, it seems, when you're that so far true, away. I mean, they really wanted to integrate right, every right, part right, of it. So right. I believe it was the first time this was ever done, mm -hmm. including the landscape and, you know, every single aspect of it. The trees had... Uh, scan tags on right. the you know, <laughs> where they would go. Can, can you describe uh, how this project fits within uh, Architectonics chronology? Like, what do you think, what, what, what do we see in Architectonics body of work in this project? Uh, and what do you hope that this project allows you to do in the future? Like, how did you get here and what do you hope to do after this, having realized this? Yeah. Uh, what I find really interesting is that Architectonics has in the past done large projects mm. and has also done somewhat similar typologies mm. but on a very different scale. And so in a way these two skills, they merged in this project, mm. you know, from the very small to the very large mm. um, and maybe inspired, for example, the, the um, hybrid TT stadium. Mm -hmm. um, there was a previous project, Inscape. Mm -hmm. Um, uh -huh. that explored similar morphologies right. but at a very different scale. And so uh, I feel it's also something that is very, maybe very particular about architectonics um, that we work at these different scales, you know, really from the very Do you small... want to work at this big scale again? I mean, this is... Uh, Absolutely, yeah. yeah when you work at a scale like this, you know, it means, you know, you're a partner in the office, grow the office, means more people, yeah. more responsibilities. Is this something that Architectonics wants to do going forward? I, I mean, the office is already pretty, uh, has a pretty good benchmark of yeah. what it's done. Do you think a larger scale office would allow you to do other things? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I also do believe that it doesn't have to be exclusively one or the other. Right. right. I mean, you learn different things at different scales. Right, right. And there's obviously, there's nothing that beats, you know, good mm -hmm. going to a construction site right. of such scale, I would say. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, you know, you can develop these different skill sets right. simultaneously, right? I mean, you don't have, because ultimately, if you would become just, a, you know, specialized in sports mm -hmm. building, mm -hmm. it will probably be de detrimental to yeah. you know innovation, and you know you just become more. And here we custom. have ecological innovation here. I yeah, mean, exactly. uh, we're here at the uh, biennial where uh, the chief curator Leslie Loco is talking about uh, decarbonization mm -hmm. and ecological aspects, and this is something that is done quite diligently here in this yes. project. So that's also, I think, seemingly a direction that you you all are interested in. Very in much so. Yeah. yeah. And we are not just interested in making this work at the technological level, you know, being sustainable, yeah. but also creating unique new forms yeah. and, you know, creating new uses and these hybrid uh, typologies. I mean, that's uh, where really our focus is. And I mean, you can see that, right? right, right. I mean, uh, probably have never seen a stadium like this. Have you been there recently? Have you seen how people are reacting to it? Or have you gotten any feedback from, you know, we see some people here in these photographs, but what has been the general reaction of the local population or the people in town? What do they think of it? And we see a lot of it on social media, which is very interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting because we, you know, have followers on mm -hmm. social media who send us their photos. Um, there's one... Uh, I don't remember his or her name in particular, who's posting all the time. And um, we have, I don't know if any, I think that photo is right, actually right. from that. Uh, oops, careful. From the, uh, from a follower. Right. And uh, you can see people are actually putting, uh, they're going camping in the park. Right. And uh, so I, I think it's being... It looks like it's being used pretty, uh, uh, pretty well in the things we've seen here. So as a last question, we've come here to Venice as we architects do every two years to discuss what's going on in the world today. Um, uh, when you came here uh, with this project, uh, what did you hope to provide in terms of dialogue in contemporary architecture today? What do you think this project gives? And this project I, I, is newly being launched, so yeah. what would you hope that it, uh, uh, it conveys to a larger con culture of architecture and construction today in the world? 
Well, I feel there's a whole stretch of different mm. attempts of answering this question mm. of, you know, mm. what the future is going mm. to be and how we are answering all these questions that are being asked. Mm. Um, and, you know, what I think we can contribute or what I would want to contribute is to answer that question from the perspective of, of a build project, right? right? Because and there's a lot of right, theory right. Um, uh, and a lot of ambition. But in the end, you know, we are still architects. And we like to build, and we like to answer these questions in build projects. Right. And it's being used, and that has, I think, tremendous exactly. impact. Thank you, Justin. I have been talking with Justin from Architectonics, a partner and architect at a New York City practice, about their project for the Asian Games 2023, Strange Objects, which is the name of this exhibition, also a book uh, that was published by Octar last year, Strange Objects. Um, and we hope to see more from architectonics on issues of ecology, uh, and especially in the south and the east, which I think this is a successful. Thank you, Justin. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you.